Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. You're telling me that Bumblebee wasn't directed by Michael Bay? Oh my god! That's awesome. Hey there guys, who are you? So, before I get into my review, just a special thanks to my sponsors and my movie ticket providers, Prima Max Cinemas, located at One City USJ25. And if you guys are looking for a comfortable movie experience to watch international, local, or even Tamil films, this is your one stop destination. This is your home run swing. This is your slam dunk. This is that last minute FIFA goal. And I'm sure you guys get the point because I have been going here for the past 4 or 5 years and I have not had one bad experience with any audience members or annoying moviegoers and you guys know how particular I am about this. If you want to check out all their social medias for any updates or upcoming movies or even contests, I'll put all the links down below and uh, if you guys directly want to buy uh, your tickets for any upcoming movies, I'll put a link to their website where you can directly purchase them at an affordable price, you know, snip snap and you're done. Bumblebee is a prequel to the Transformers franchise and it was directed by um, Travis Knight and stars Hayley Steinfeld as well as His name is John C I'm sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> when a war breaks out in Cybertron between the Autobots and the Decepticons, Bumblebee flees to Earth to seek refuge and soon cross paths with Hayley Steinfeld's character in a junkyard. She soon finds out that the military is after Bumblebee and she does everything in her power to keep him a secret. Wow, I have to say, the exclusion of Michael Bay from a Transformers film has a huge difference. I mean, uh, I guess he was one of the producers but at least he didn't direct it. Honestly speaking, this is my favourite Transformers film. Hayley Steinfeld and Bumblebee are what essentially carried this movie. For the first time, I actually cared for the main character. She had plenty of depth, very likeable and Hayley Steinfeld, as you all know, is a phenomenal actor. She is 10 times the character Shia LaBeouf and Mark Wahlberg ever was. And that's awesome. The relationship between Hayley and Bumblebee was excellent. There was a few touching character moments and this felt like a very quiet Transformers film. In the past, all Michael Bay did was jam in a whole lot of bloated action sequences that really had no payoff because there were essentially no characters we could latch on to. I understand that most of us go into these types of films and expect some great action sequences and we do get those. But I have to say, one of my favourite scenes in this film was uh, when Hayley was in the garage with Bumblebee and she was sort of playing some old records of her dad's uh, for Bumblebee and it was a really really touching moment and that's essentially what built the relationship between these two main characters and it worked excellently. And speaking of Bumblebee, wow he's great here. They did an excellent job with the visual storytelling because B almost had no lines to say through the entire movie um, other than constructing sentences through his radio and that's essentially why it works so well. So let's talk about John Cena. I mean, I love the guy, right? I mean, I've been looking up to him since I was seven. I mean, he's amazing. And um, he basically plays this military guy. And I'll admit, he's generic at times. But when he, you know, gets angry and shouts orders and stuff like that, it's bloody entertaining to watch. What I was actually worried about was Hayley Steinfeld's um, love interest. But thank God it worked fine. There were no cringe moments, he had a part to play and the romance wasn't forced. When it comes to Transformers movies, the only thing that I could commend them for was their stunning visuals and great action sequences and once again I had no problems here. I also like the design for the Transformers because they actually made sense. Um, as we all know Bumblebee is a beetle and when he does in fact transform back into himself, we can sort of see all the parts of the car on him and um, yeah, logic. Good job, Travis Knight. Good job. As much as I enjoyed Bumblebee, unfortunately, there are still some flaws. So I thought it had an unnecessary little subplot with these bullies and it's almost like something you'd see out of uh, Mean Girls and um, it really added nothing and um, it's really just filler. And as for the dialogue, I mean, it wasn't all that great. There were a couple of cringy moments from Haley's parents and uh, I was sort of afraid that 
it could essentially dive back into the pot brownie eating mom from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and uh, oh boy those were terrible times um, thank god we've moved on from that and once again we have that boring military subplot and of course it never really invested me because each time they were there I was always like come on just take me back to Bumblebee and Haley Steinfeld right I mean I really don't care about this military crap. So, all in all, I can confirm that this is in fact the best Transformers movies as of yet. I mean, it was entertaining, it was funny, it had excellent character moments, but it does have some flaws. With all that being said, I'm going to give Bumblebee a B+. I definitely recommend that you guys check this one out and once again, if you guys want to get your tickets, I'll put a link down below. You can directly purchase them. Go have a good time. Trust me, it's worth it. And um, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao. No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! Do it! Just...